the team has a job to do and it's disrupted by a local Austinian who is all too weird as Austin likes to keep itself. Some people don't like boundaries or rules. But if you look closely, we're performing dangerous tasks while also saving the environment. It's chilly outside. With the American Underwater Service Team's annual silt removal of Barton Springs Pool in Austin, it's always a treat to get back into some clear, warm water. Within Zickler Park's 350 acres lies one of the crown jewels of Austin, Barton Springs Pool. The pool itself measures three acres in size and is fed from an underground spring with the average temperature of 68 to 70 degrees, ideal for year-round swimming. The team sets up their roll-off boxes and silt removal process to start dredging. We are here to clear the silt and be mindful of the natural inhabitants and aquatic life within the pool. We don't like sucking up these little guys. Over the years, Barton Springs Pool has drawn people from all walks of life, from their legislators who have concocted state laws there, to free-spirited, topless sunbathers who turned heads in the 1970s. Robert Redford learned to swim at the pool when he was five years old while visiting family in Austin. Today, Barton Springs still attracts a diverse crowd of people and have seen record-setting numbers of visitors nearing 800,000 in recent years. The spring serves as home to the endangered Barton Springs salamander and is listed as a federally protected habitat. This pool is closed to the public from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. every Thursday to allow for the vigorous and methodical cleaning methods required to help maintain the pool area for wildlife and guests alike. The pump had stopped because someone has crossed the barriers of a caution tape. This guy is doing this repeatedly during the day. We have to shut down and stop all procedures and wait for him to leave the area. Of course, our slight delay with our, you know, person jumping the fence. Usually whenever, whenever people actually enter into our work area, we cannot dive. It's a safety issue. So at that point, we have to shut down. Uh, if, it, if it is too much of an instance where they keep repeating what they're doing, we actually notify the, uh, the police department and they come out like they did. And uh, they basically let the gentleman know that, you know, it's, he can't be in this area. So at that point, it looked like he pretty much, you know, stopped uh, jumping the fence. So we were able to continue working. Yeah, whenever we're, whenever we're actually pushing all this rock and gravel and sediment, you know, it'll go over there in the dumpster. Of course, we use our, our uh, light polymerization. And we've actually got a containment set up so that if any, any small micron of uh, sedimentation actually still passes through, we actually contain it so we don't have any contaminants going further downstream. So people swimming downstream are not going to complain that, you know, we're not, we're causing a mess or clouding up the water. So we're actually fully contained and uh, no, no issues have been made so far. So, so far, so good. We've already had three people approach us today and ask, ask uh, 
who uh, who was in charge with the city and uh, who, who did they need to talk to about what this project entailed and uh, what what type of process we were doing yeah with the uh, well with the blind salamanders you know I mean we're creating you know a better habitat for them by actually giving them more of an environment more of an area to move you know and and uh, be able to uh, do what they need to do uh, whatever the blind salamanders seem to do but uh, yeah, I mean, in the, in the shallower areas, you know, the temperature can actually get a lot higher because there's not enough water. So with, with the deeper water, they're able to still be able to get the, uh, you know, the habitat that they need. So there, there's a benefit there, but mostly what we're doing is actually for the beneficia uh, beneficiary of the uh, Martin Springs pool. So that, like when the swimmers go through there, you know, they're not hitting their hands, you know, trying to swim across there, you know, and if they want the shallower area, the shallower area is over there. This is supposed to be the deeper area where people are able to actually, you know, swim laps and go back and forth and, and not have to worry about hitting bottom. Well, this is actually day one of 10 days. So, what's that? Second. Oh, yeah. um, day one of full pumping, the second day of being here of 10 days. And, uh, you know, we'll be, uh, we'll go ahead and finish up on Friday. We'll close down. Uh, the, the area over here is going to be extremely busy over Saturday and Sunday. So, you know, just to, just to stop from any, any uh, altercations or anything, you know, we'll go ahead and shut down on the weekends and then we'll, we'll be back out here Monday morning. And usually that, that's worked out really good so far. Uh, two years ago, it actually flooded through here and ripped the entire fence section out here. And actually, they were buried. Some of the fence sections were buried underneath some of the, some of the sediment. And we actually filmed uh, the recovery of one of those fence sections out of there. Of course, it, uh, a fence section like that being also a hazard, you know, for swimmers, should they step on the metal, you know, or, you know, hurt their feet or something, you know, walking cross bottom. But I mean, we're able to actually remove those hazards from the water as well. Yeah, during during the week, you know, it's relatively quiet. You know, I mean, uh, in the afternoons, you'll see more and more people start to uh, to trickle in here, and more people are inquisitive of uh, you know what's going on, what we're doing, you know, uh, what what impact it's having, and so forth. And on the weekends, it's it's ten times worse because everybody's off of work and usually we'll have quite a few interruptions during the weekend so to avoid that we're we're basically trying to uh, maintain mostly uh, day daytime working hours so as you can tell during the day today we had very minimal traffic but now that we're actually getting towards the end of the day and people are getting off work traffic starting to pick up and more people are starting to filter in uh, Logan went ahead and moved uh, more towards the ladder over there. So we're actually opening up the center part of it. He's dropping it about uh, down about two feet. At the top of the hill, he's able to actually stand out of the water. But whenever he's actually down there in, in the area where he's dredged, he's dropped it an additional two feet. So you have almost six foot of water depth there now. So he's made good progress for the day. I decided to get a bit of education from Nathaniel Bindick a senior environmental scientist of the city of Austin's Watershed Protection Department. Uh, the Martin Springs salamanders in particular are under these rocks here. So these folks are flipping rocks and catching the animals using aquarium nets and turkey basters. So they catch them. I get them. I bring them over here and I photograph them. The animal has intricate patterns on its head and each one is different. So then what we do is use computer software to let us know if we've caught the same one before or not. And when we have that information, we can do things like model their survival and abundance over time. As you start going west in Texas, it gets drier and drier and drier. So people think that these evolved, they basically skipped the second stage of their life, which is transforming into a terrestrial adult. Mm -hmm. So they retain their gills and stay underground. I don't know if you noticed the yeah. really things on the side of its head. Those are their gills. So I'm sure you're familiar with tadpoles turn mm -hmm. into frogs. Mm -hmm. Larval salamanders turn into adult terrestrial salamanders. A lot of them do, but some don't. 
Some just re stay at that larval stage, and that's what these do, and most of the ones that we have in the hill country. Wow. The, the genus Eurycia. Interesting. Yeah. And, and why focus on them here? Why do we focus on them? Mm -hmm. Well, we work for the city of Austin. Mm -hmm. The city of Austin owns Zilker Park. The city of Austin runs Barton Springs Pool. Well, because the salamanders occupy such a restricted area, and there's a city on top of it, basically, on all their habitat, and people want to swim in their habitat, the city needs a special permit from the federal government to do that. We'll probably be done. Well, the end will be done in 40 minutes. Sarah, maybe an hour. So, you know, we'll be done within the next two to three hours, completely finished here. You know, last time between uh, for all this habitat, we might have got 100 or so on average. And that's just what we catch. That's not what's here. What's here, there's gonna be obviously some that we miss. And we, we're at, we actually have a way to calculate that. We've estimated the population size here to be over 2,000. There've been days where we've caught 600 in here. There's been days where we caught 30 in part because these animals will go underground and they'll come back out. And then what really I think drives the fluctuations is that there are population booms where they make a lot of babies <laughs> and they start coming out here and then we, we catch them. We are committed to doing what is best for our clients. From our management to our field crews, our 26 years of experience as American Underwater Services is the premier and longest standing diving dredging company for virtually any commercial underwater job. We offer innovative cost-effective solutions to your commercial diving, pond cleaning, and dredging needs. At American Underwater Services, we specialize in HOA, golf course, farm, and homeowner pond dredging. We can help you regain control over your ponds and turn them into crystal clear water havens for fish, animals, and people alike. Give us a call today. American Underwater Services. Aquatic engineering done right.